prophesy unto our people. Read. And the breath came into them. And breath, the knowledge of God, the Spirit of God came into these men. Come on. And they left and stood up upon their feet. And God says when the Spirit of God comes upon you, that's when you live. Our people are as zombies right now because they got the Spirit of God in them. Right. God says they're in the congregation of the dead. Look at our people, man. They're spiritually dead. You got men want to be women, women want to be men. That's confusion. You got men having sex with men, women drop carpet to carpet. You understand? Men eating pork and all this stuff, sleeping with kids. These things happen in society. We are spiritually dead. We put on tattoos. You understand? We go marry the other nations. We break God's laws. Hell, we bleach our skin. Blonde our hair. That's a spiritually dead people. chapter 4 the Bible speaks about unity because right now what we're looking for is men men that's willing to come on this side of the battlefield and look behind you you see these brothers here that seem as though they're idle they don't know what's going on in society they're smoking weed all day counting pulling boss to get $200 and all this stuff that's a life that's an aimless life the, the difference between your men now and them is that your men are getting enlightened so we need Jose Alvin Ezekiel on board teaching God's people that's what we need. We need strong men. Joel chapter 3 and verses 9. Joel 3 and 9. We're going back right here. Joel 3 and verse 9. We need strong men to stand up and fix society. So who's Alvin? Are you too old to do that? Would you say that? No. No, you're not. You have the experience. You have the experience. You have the wisdom. You have the experience like you rightfully said, sir. There's things that you've been through in life. These young men now live into experience and you can tell them, son, I did that and it's the wrong step I took. I'm advising you not to do the same. You don't understand how it was in Ezekiel? That's how we ought, we ought to obey the elders. And a lot of times the elders go through a lot and they can teach us something. But a lot of the elders at the same time, Alvin, they ain't no good examples. You know that too. There's a lot of men that's old and it's terrible examples for the youngsters. That's why there's a lot of disrespect in the community. Read what you got, sir. Book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 9. Proclaiming ye this among the Gentiles. Come on. Prepare word. Red. Wake up the mighty men. What did God say? Prepare word. Wake up the mighty men. Because you brothers in your right mind are mighty men. Right. You are lions waiting to roar. That's how God describes you men. And as a lion, you must have what on your face? Go on Alvin, you're smiling. As a lion, you must have what on your face Alvin? Yeah, so why you shave the beard brother? Give me that in Leviticus 21 and 5. You know? So Alvin, I want to get your, your... I'm going to give you, I'm going to be fair. Give me a reason why you shave the beard. I shave my beard. Well, you know what? I just feel like. Just feel like doing it? Yeah, yeah. Do you shave your beard off? Let me hear uh, Do you shave your beard off, young man? Just line it up. Okay. Second? I was a young man. Like you used to wrap the beard and thing. Okay, so, but now you want to look a little bit younger. Here, I've been right there, man. Now, listen to this verse, man. Listen to this verse. You know, you know the no, beard and the grip. I'm confessing it already. Fair enough. So, I got to run. No. Hold on, and before you run, you gotta get this verse, you know. Right, this is the medicine right here. Come on. Go to Leviticus, so it's gonna one of us, five. We deal with the men, brother. What's your name? Collis, nice meeting you, Collis. They shall not make baldness upon their heads. Come on. Nor shave off the corners of their beard. So can we read again for Collis? They shall not make baldness upon their head. The law of the Bible says, thou shalt not make baldness on your head. You know, you know a lot of people that bald their head. Do you know some people that bald their head? Who do that? Who do that? Shake your head. Who? The father does that? That's against the most high God. They got Michael Jordan doing it. You got um, Shaquille O'Neal doing it. A lot of these basketball players, they ball in their head. God says, who T.D. Jakes? You're a pastor. You went to church today? Or you, you keep it sober. You went to church today. You're a pastor. Does he have hair on his head? Okay. I was as mine. The assistant pastor. Does he have hair on his head? And the deacons? Because a lot of pastors ball their head. You know one pastor told me one time? He said, brother, the reason why I ball my head is so the anointing can hit flush on the temple. They make a lot of nonsense up, you know? That's what they say. They say so the oil could seep in properly into my brain. These pastors are leading our people astray. So what did God say? Read the law again. They shall not make baldness upon their heads. Neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard. Neither shall they shave off the corners of their beards. What is God saying, Alvin? Let your beard rot. Bro, that's what God is saying. You, you understand the call this? Do you agree with that law? 
here. Say again? I'm listening. I'm here too. Okay, but I'm asking you, do you agree with that though? Because a, a part of learning, you can say, yeah, this makes sense, I acknowledge that. Do you agree with this law? Because, you know, uh, you're a bit iffy. Why is that so? Why are you a bit iffy about it? Okay, fair enough. Alert, so I'm listening great, 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 it's great. You know how people say, let me say this here real quick before Albi goes. You know how people say, a shave face is professionalism. You know people say that? Like if to look professional, you gotta shave your face off. The president of Guyana, what does he have on his face? What does he have on his face? What does Mr. Irfan Ali, what does he have on his face? A beard. So is he the most unprofessional man in Guyana? No. So in other words, the tactic is to keep you so-called black men and Armenian men in sin. That's why when you shave your beard, you get something called what? Razor bumps. But the Chinese man can shave his beard all day, he ain't gonna get no razor bumps. You see what I'm saying? Because the law was given to you men. Lions have manes. Now when you put the beard on the face, what spirit you think comes upon you? A masculine spirit. But then in the time of slavery, we have some slavery pictures. Can you hold this up, Soda Joseph? Can you hold this slavery picture up for the brothers? Let me show them this one. This one right here. Yes, sir. In the time of slavery, what do you all think the slave master was doing to her ancestors? They were shaving their heads and their beards, and they were calling you what? Boy. Come here, boy. Have you ever heard of, you never heard of those slave movies? Hey, boy, come over here, boy. Why are they calling a grown-ass man, Alvin's age, a boy? And then today, we shave it willingly, and we like the title of being called boy. Like, for example, we say, I'm her boyfriend. Have you ever heard people say, I'm her man friend? We you never heard that. We say, I'm her boyfriend. So the childish mindset is still inside of us. You have a girl, um, Ezekiel, you got a girlfriend? Alvin, I run. I'm touching marriage now, you know. Far. You got a girlfriend, Alvin, hold on, Alvin. Yeah, you see the ring on the wife. finger? Wife. You got wife. You married? Yeah. How long you married, Alvin? Yeah, hey, listen to this, Ezekiel. 40 years. Now, in this marriage, is it 50 50 or does it work? 60 40? How does it work? In the marriage? 20 30, or how does it work? Equally. Equal 50 50. Yeah. All right, now. When we talking about marriage in the Bible, principle and if we remember that the man is give me that in uh, First Corinthians. Man is the what? Head of the home. What if the man is the head of the home? How is it 50 50 in the marriage? I'm kind of confused. Yes, no, no, we are confused. Yeah. She administrates the home. She administrates the, the home. Is the ministers? They she dictates to them. I dictate to her. Okay, okay, but well, that ain't a 50 50 marriage then, man. You running the show, Alvin. No, so that works, no, if you tell your wife, listen to me, listen to me, yes. right, go ahead Alvin, so I don't misunderstand you. All right. If I'm the king, listen to this, you got to listen to what you're saying. If I'm the king, I got this policy. You got a policy? Yes, you just... No, I just picture now, yeah, put a picture. The wife, she's the prime minister, or she's the second court. The children, they're the minister. See the All right, Alvin. Now here is it. Now we're gonna get straight to the chase, Alvin. The man is the head of the home. Right. The wife and children gotta be in subjection to the man. Right. That's what God says. Can we get it in, in his first Corinthians 11? Yes, Let's go to this, Alvin. The book of First Corinthians of 11 of verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. In the Bible, the head of these men is Christ, the one true Christ. Christ is a black man. You see to the far right? That's a description of what Christ will look like based on the scriptures. Right. In the Bible, Christ is described as a black man. Because you know a lot of black brothers are looking for some black identity movement, some Africanism, something to be a part of. Well, guess what? We said off some, sorry. Granger, yeah. They said, oh, I love when Granger is in president because for once, we got a black president. When Obama turned president, they said, oh God, thank God, that's a savior right there. So we are trying to find some form of black identity to cleave to. But guess what? In the Bible, Christ is described as a black man. Right. And it's the greatest man to walk on this earth. Right. But what did, it, what did the Bible say about him? But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of us is Christ, the black Messiah. And the head of the woman is the man. And the what? And the head of the woman is the man. So in society, in the Bible, the head of the woman is always the man. That's what God says. The head of the woman is the man. So this is about building structure in the family. So a college, you're not married yet, right? You're not married, Jose. Are you married, sir? When young men plan on getting married, you gotta step into the marriage with what mindset? Woman, I run the show. I'm the head of this house. You understand that, Collis? You understand that, Jose? What's your name, brother? Jason, you understand it, right, Jason? You step right into this marriage, letting the woman know you run the show. If she wanna submit to you, then she ain't a woman for you. You all understand that? That's how God says this thing must work. 
Yo, you don't understand that. Yo, you have any questions? You got a question, Alvin? I know you got a question. No, when what question you got? Huh? When your album will be next? Like tomorrow? Yes, anytime. Oh, today, um, no, we won't be on the streets tomorrow. Next Sabbath, next Saturday, we'll be at, um, at Camper Richard Street. But, you see that fly in your hand? At the bottom right hand corner, no, at the back of the flyer. At the back of the flyer, the bottom right hand corner, there's two contact numbers there. Because we have a WhatsApp group and we have a physical church or school. So Alvin, guess what? You could come there as well. Now, y'all be on YouTube all day. You be on YouTube, right? YouTube, sometimes. You be on YouTube, Jose. On YouTube, you can type in R-U-I-C Guyana and you see videos with us on the streets teaching. We have schools throughout the four corners of this world. We have schools in Russia. We got schools in Japan. We got schools in Jamaica, Trinidad, Grenada. You understand? Here in Guyana, Suriname. Several parts of the United States of America. So we are growing our organization. Hell, even in Africa, we got schools. Why? The prophecy says, give me Ezekiel 11 and verse 16. The prophecy says that Israel have been scattered as a means of slavery throughout the four corners of the earth. And in these places that we've been scattered as slaves, we will come together. We will get our minds right. We will say, you know what, brother? I ain't Rasta, you know. I ain't an African, you know. I ain't a Guyanese. I'm an Israelite. You're the prince prince that has fallen with God. I ain't a Gogla man. You understand? I ain't no black man. I am an Israelite that the Bible speaks of. That's what we're going to be saying in these last days. And we're going to come together. Listen to this prophecy of uh, Alvin. Ezekiel 11 and 16. Book of Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse 16. Therefore say, Thus said the Lord God, Although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries. God says, Although I have scattered the Israelites amongst the heathens, and amongst the countries. Because is there any country on this planet you can go to and don't see black people? Isn't there black people in Japan? Isn't black people in Europe? Wait a minute, how did black people end up over there? Teach! Honest, you seem intelligent, man. Slave trade. Slave trade. <laughs> so is history real? Yeah, people say slavery didn't happen. People are crazy. Slavery didn't happen. That's why you can find black people throughout the four corners of the earth. So the Lord says, though I scatter you in these foreign countries, yet May I be unto them a little sanctuary in the countries where they are, where they shall come. God says, despite this happen to them, they'll get their minds right and they'll set up little sanctuaries in the countries that He scattered them. So that's how we got a branch right here in Guyana, and the Most High God is working with us to do so. But how can the branch grow if you men don't join the battle? If you men don't join the army of the Most High, think about it. When have you ever seen so-called black men? Stand in military gear. Look at how we dress, brother. Look at how we dress. Look at these men. We have on military boots, military pants. We're dressed in uniform. What is that telling you? Our minds is getting right. This ain't no uh, foolish movement, you know. This is the movement of the Most High God. This is the army of the Lord. Give me the army in Ezekiel 37. You're in Ezekiel, right? Ezekiel 37 and verse 10. Let me show y'all the army of the Most High God. And listen, is this the army that's going to pull guns and knives? No, we're going to do that. We're going to tear down strongholds with the words of God. We're going to get families right with the words of God. We want guns and knives, brother. This here can do the damage we need to do. Read what you got. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 and verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. God commanded us to prophesy unto our people. Read. And the breath came into them. And breath, the knowledge of God, the spirit of God came into these men. Come on. And they left and stood up upon their feet. And God says when the spirit of God comes upon you, that's when you live. Our people are as zombies right now because they got the spirit of God in them. Right. God says they're in the congregation of the dead. Look at our people, man. They're spiritually dead. You got men want to be women, women want to be men. That's confusion. You got men having sex with men, women drop carpet to carpet. You understand? Men eating pork and all this stuff, sleeping with kids. These things happen in society. We are spiritually dead. We put on tattoos. You understand? We go marry the other nations. We break God's laws. Hell, we bleach our skin, blonde our hair. That's a spiritually dead people. But God says when the breath of life came into you, what happened? They did what? And they stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. And what happened? And they stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. God says we are a great army. Army. We take orders from the Most High God. So men, you got to get yourselves together.
This shit is family. This shit is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation 